Hello friends, in this lecture we will see uh, the first come first serve scheduling algorithm that is a uh, type of CPU scheduling algorithm. In today's lecture we will see the definition of FCFS, advantages and disadvantages and we will see some of the solved problems. The first come first serve scheduling algorithm. This is a very simple algorithm. Here the jobs are otherwise called as processes are scheduled based on the arrival time. Okay, the implementation is based on FIFO structure. Next, the job which comes first in the ready queue will get the CPU first. That means the jobs will be waiting in the ready queue. Which job comes first in the ready queue will get the CPU first. This is first come first serve algorithm. It is a non preemptive scheduling algorithm. Okay. Now let us see the advantages of first come first serve scheduling algorithm. It is a very simple and straightforward algorithm and easy to understand and easy to implement. There is no complexity of this particular algorithm to implementing. Hence it is having many drawbacks also. The performance is very poor that is the average waiting time of this first come first serve algorithm is very high when compared to all the other algorithm and it is a non preemptive algorithm hence starvation may occur. Problem 1 consider the following 3 processes that arrive at time 0 with length of CPU burst is given in milliseconds. So, this is the given processes we are having 3 processes and bus time of first process is 24 and bus time of P2 and P3 are 3. Bus time means the total number of time taken to execute this process. Okay. And if the process are arrived in the order P1, P2, P3 and are served in first come first serve order. Okay. And the arrival time arrival time all the processes are 0. Okay. They are given in the problem itself. So, now let us try to solve this problem by using first come first serve scheduling algorithm. Now, let us see the solution for this problem by drawing this gun chart. So, the purpose of gun chart is illustrate the scheduling that is scheduling of all processes including start and finish time of each participating processes. Here we are having three processes and bus time is also given in the order itself and the uh, x axis represent the time, time in milliseconds. Okay, This is what given in the problem. So, which is the first process? First process is P1, the time is 24, isn't it? So, first 24 milliseconds the process 1 will occupy, after that P2 will come, P2 uh, the bus time is 24. So, P2 will start at 24 and finish at 27. So, 24 plus 3 equal to 27, right? After that, P3 will start. The starting time of P3 is 27 and finishing time is 27 plus 3 which is equal to 30, okay? So, to complete all the three processes, the CPU will take 30 milliseconds. Now, let us uh, compute the waiting time, okay? So, the waiting time of P1 is 0 because this is the first process. So, immediately the process will get CPU for execution. So, there is no waiting time for P1 and that waiting time of P2 is 24 milliseconds because the burst time of P1 is 24. So, after completing P1 only P2 will be started for execution and then the burst time of P3 is 27 milliseconds. Okay, 27. This is the starting time of P3. Okay, after completing P1, P2 only, the P3 will be started its execution. Now, the average waiting time is 0, 0 for P1, P1, this is P2, this is P3. Average waiting time is 0 plus 24 plus 27. See, these values divided by 3. We are having total number of 3 processes. Hence, the value is 17 milliseconds. So, the average waiting time is 17 milliseconds. Let us see another order how the average waiting time will get reduced. Suppose if the process arrive, arrived in this order, first 
P2 will come then P1 then P3 ok. So, this will come first and this is second and this is the third one ok. Now, let us try to draw this gun chart which is the first process P2. P2 will start execute first ok. So, the finishing time of P2 is plus 3 which is equal to 3. 3 is nothing but the burst time ok. Next P3 will start execute first. So, 3 plus 3 which is uh, 6 after that P1 will start its execution ok. The time is 24. So, 6 plus 24 which is equal to 30 here the finishing time of all process will not be changed. This is same for uh, FCFS ok. That is the total of all the uh, bus time of all the processes. But when come to average waiting time see first the waiting time of first process is 6 the waiting time of second process is 0 and the waiting time of third process is 3 is not it. So, divided by 3 which is equal to 3 milliseconds which is very much less than the previous one. So, the previous order the waiting time is 17 milliseconds. Now, let us see another problem. Ok, here also we are having three different processes P1, P2 and P3 and the corresponding bus time also given in addition to that they give the arrival time. So, these three things will be given in the problem ok. So, from this value we need to compute the starting time, wait time, finish time and turn around time ok. The starting time and finish time will be taken from gun chart. This is the gun chart. See, this is the gun chart and we need to compute this waiting time and turn around time for all the process. So, what is the formula for waiting time? Waiting time equal to start time minus arrival time. See, this is the start time, arrival time is also given in the problem itself. So, we have to compute waiting time which is equal to start time minus arrival time. And next one is TA. TA is nothing but turn around time. Turn around time is the total number of time taken to complete the process. Okay, that is finishing time minus arrival time. Okay, finishing time is here, arrival time will also given in the problem. So, finishing time minus arrival time is the total number of taken to complete the process. Okay, let us try to solve this particular problem. First, we have to draw this gun chart to fill the values of the starting time and finishing time. Okay, which is the first process P1. P1 is the first process and burst time of P1 is 12. Ok, so first 12 milliseconds the P1 will occupy, after that the P2 will start execution, what is the arrival time 1, so this is less than 12, so no problem P2 will start execute. So what is the burst time 6, so 12 plus 6 which is equal to 18 and next P3 will start execution, so the burst time is 9, so 18 plus 9 which is equal to 27, hence the starting time of P1 which is equal to 0, is not it 0 and starting time of P2 is 12, see the 12 milliseconds the P2 starts execution and starting time of P3 is 9, 18 sorry ok and when come to finish time the P1 will finish at 12 and P2 is finish at 18 and P3 will finish at 27 ok. So, we completed these two values. After that we have to compute the waiting time. What is the formula for waiting time? Start time minus arrival time. So, for P1 no problem everything are 0, the waiting time is 0 because without wait the P1 start execution. When come to P2, the starting time is 12, arrival time is 1, hence 12 minus 1 which is equal to 11. And when come to P3 is 14, 18 minus 4 equal to 14. Ok, now let us try to compute this turn around time. Turn around time, the formula is finish time minus arrival time, is not it? So, finish time is 12, arrival time is 0, then the P1 the turn around time is 12. When come to P2, the finish time is 18 and arrival time is 1, so 18 minus 1 which is equal to 17. When come to P3, the finish time is 27, arrival time is 4, so 27 minus 4 which is equal to 23. Ok, now let us try to compute the average waiting time of all the process. Ok, see waiting time is given here, isn't it? 0 plus 11 plus 14 divided by 3 which is equal to 
three three. This is the average waiting time. Next, we need to compute the average turn around time, which is equal to twelve plus seventeen plus twenty three. That is here. Okay, divided by three, which is equal to seventeen point three three. Right. And next, let us see the another problem. Here, five different processes are there. Five processes are there, and the corresponding bus time also given here. If they won't give any arrival time, means we have to assume the arrival time is zero for all the processes. That is, in the beginning itself, every process come to the ready queue. Isn't it? So only these two things will be given in the problem. Then we have to assume that arrival time is zero for all the processes. And by using this gun chart, we have to compute the uh, starting time and finish time of all the processes. Okay. So starting time of P1 is zero because arrival time is every uh, zero for all those things, isn't it? So the bus time is 10. So the starting time of P1 is zero. Finishing time of P1 is 10, so starting time and finish time. And second process, the bus time is 29, so 10 plus 29, which is equal to 39. So the starting time of P2 is 10, finishing time is 39. Okay, starting is 10, finishing is 39. And when come to three uh, process three. The bus time is three, so thirty-nine plus three, which is equal to forty-two, and finishing time is sorry, starting time is twenty-nine and finishing time is forty-two. And when come to P four, the starting time is forty-two and fin finishing time is forty-two plus seven, which is equal to forty-nine. And P five is twelve, so forty-nine plus twelve, which is equal to sixty-one. So the starting is forty nine, finishing is sixty one. Okay, because the arrival time is zero, hence the waiting time. What is the waiting time? Start time minus arrival time is waiting time. Okay, here arrival time is always zero, hence the starting time is same for waiting time also. And when come to turn around time, finishing time minus arrival time is turn around time. So the finishing time will be same for Turn around time here also because they won't give any arrival time. Okay, when come to uh, the average waiting time to compute the average waiting time, see this is the average waiting time of of all the processes here. Okay, so 10 plus uh, 39 plus 42 plus 49 divided by 5, which is equal to 28. And when computing the turn around time, see these are the turn around time values. 10 plus 39 plus 42 plus 49 plus 61 divided by 5, which is equal to 40.2. Up to this, we have seen some problem. From this problem, what are the things we understand? This FCFS, that is first come first serve scheduling algorithm. This is very best for long processes and very simple and straightforward method. That is minimum overhead on processes. And when come to demerits. Even a very small process should wait for its turn, okay, to come to utilize the CPU. Okay, if the process is very small but it is uh, arrived at late, though it has to wait a long time, which results the lower CPU utilization. Okay, the throughput is not emphasized here. Okay, the throughput is not highlighted in first come first serve scheduling algorithm. Up to this, we have seen the first come first serve scheduling algorithm. Under this, we have seen the definition, advantages and disadvantages. After that, we have seen some solved problems also. Students, please write the formula for waiting time and turn around time in the comment box. And in the forthcoming video, we will see another scheduling algorithms in detail. Thank you.